Lord, will I lift up my soul. My God, I have put my trust in thee. Out of here. My lady, is she behind the scene? Oh, let me not be confounded, neither let mine enemies triumph over me. For all they that hope in thee. My shall... lady, she not gonna die. Out of here. Out of my sight. Out of my... Oh, my God. God, help me. <laughs> Betty? Child? Dear child, will you wake? Will you open up your eyes? Betty, little one. Uncle, Susanna Walcott's here from Dr. Griggs. Oh, let her come. Let her come. come. Susanna. What does the doctor say, child? He bid me tell you, Reverend Sir, that he cannot discover no medicine for it in his books. Then he must search on. Aye, sir, he have been searching his books since he left you, sir, but he bid me tell you that you might look to unnatural things for the cause of it. No, no, there be no unnatural cause here. Tell him I have sent for Reverend Hale of Beverly, and Mr. Hale will surely confirm that. Let him look to medicine and put out all thought of a natural cause here. There be none. Aye, sir, he bid me tell you. Speak nothing of it in the village, Susanna. Go directly home, child, and speak nothing of unnatural causes. Aye, sir. I pray for her, sir. Uncle, the rumor of witchcraft is all about. I think you'd best go down and deny it yourself. The parlor's packed with people, sir. I'll sit with her. And what shall I say to them? That my daughter and my niece I discovered dancing like heathen in the forest? Uncle, we did dance. Let you tell them I confessed it, and I'll be whipped if I must be. They're speaking of witchcraft. Betty's not witched. Abigail, I cannot go before the congregation when I know you have not opened with me. What did you do with her in the forest? We did dance, Uncle. And when you left out of the bush so suddenly, Betty was frightened, and then she fainted. And there's the whole of it. Child, sit you down. I would never hurt Betty. I love her dearly. Now look you, Abigail, your punishment will come in its time. But if you trafficked with spirits in the forest last night, I must know it now. For surely my enemies will, and they will ruin me with it. We never conjured spirits. And why can't she not move herself since midnight? This child is desperate. It must come out. My enemies will bring it out. Let me know what you've done there. Do you understand that I have many enemies, Abigail? I've heard of it, Uncle. There is a faction that has sworn to drive me from my pulpit. Do you know that? I think so, sir. Now then, in the midst of this disruption, my own household is discovered to be the very center of some obscene practice. Abominations are done in the forest. For sport, Uncle. You call this sport? Abigail, if you know anything that may help the doctor, for God's sake, tell it to me. I saw Tituba waving her arms over that fire when I came on you. Why was she doing that? I heard a screeching and a gibberish coming from her mouth. She was swaying like a dumb beast over that fire. She always sings her Barbados songs, and we dance. Abigail, I cannot blink what I saw, for my enemies will not blink it. I saw a dress lying on the grass. A dress? I, a dress. And I thought I saw someone naked running through the trees. No one was naked. You mistake yourself, Uncle. I saw it. Now you tell me true, child. And I pray you, you feel the weight of truth upon you. For now my ministry's at stake. My ministry and perhaps your cousin's life. Whatever abominations you have done, give me all of it now. For I dare not be taken unaware when I go before him down there. There's nothing more. I swear it, Uncle. Abigail, I have fought here for three long years to bring these stiff-necked people to me. And now, just now, when some good respect is rising for me in the parish, you compromise my very character. I have given you a home, child. I have put clothes upon your back. Now you give me a bright answer. Your name in the town. It is entirely white, is it not? Well, I'm sure it is, sir. There'd be no blush about my name. Is there any other cause than you have told me? 
for your being discharged from Goody Proctor's service? I have heard it said, and I will tell you as I heard it, that she comes so rarely to the church this year, for she will not sit so close to something soiled. What signified that remark? She hates me, Uncle. She must, for I would not be her slave. It's a bitter woman, a lying, cold, sniveling woman, and I will not work for such a woman. She may be. Yet it has troubled me that you are now seven months out of their house, and in all this time no other family has ever called for your service. They want slaves, not such as I. Let them send to Barbados for that. I will not black my face for any of them. You begrudge my bed, Uncle. No, no. My name is good in the village. I will not have it said that my name is soiled. Lady Proctor is a gossiping liar. No, no, I cannot have anyone. Why, Goody Putnam, come in. It is a marvel. It is surely a stroke of hell upon you. No, Goody Putnam, How it is... high did she fly? How high? No. No, she never flew. Why, it's sure she did. Mr. Collins saw her going over Ingersoll's barn and come down light as a bird, he said. Now, look, you, Goody Putnam, she never... Oh, good morning, Mr. Putnam. It is a providence the thing is out now. It is a providence. Why, what's out, sir? What's... Why, her eyes is closed. Look, you, Anne. That's strange. Ours is open. Your Ruth is sick? I'd not call it sick. The devil's touch is heavier than sick. It's death, you know. It's death driving into them forked and hoofed. Oh, I pray not. Why, how does Ruth ail? She ails as she must. She never waked this morning. But her eyes open and she walks. And she sees not, hears not, and cannot eat. Her soul is taken short. They say you've sent for Reverend Hale of Beverly. A precaution only. Mr. Hale has great experience in all demonic arts, and he I thought... He has indeed. And found a witch in Beverly last year, and let you remember that. Now, Goody Anne, they only thought that were a witch, and I'm certain there'd be no element of witchcraft here. No witchcraft? Now, look you, Mr. Paris. Thomas. Thomas, I pray you lead not to witchcraft. I know that you, least of all you, Thomas, would wish so disastrous a charge laid upon me... But we dare not leap to witchcraft here. They will howl me out of Salem for such corruption in my house. Mr. Paris, I have taken your part in all contention here, and I would continue, but I cannot if you hold back in this. There are hurtful, vengeful spirits laying hands on these children. Thomas, you cannot... Anne, tell Mr. Paris what you have done. Reverend Paris, I have laid seven babies unbaptized in the earth. Believe me, sir, you never saw more hearty babies born, and yet each would wither in my arms the very night of their birth. I have spoke nothing, but my heart has clamored intimations. And now this year, my Ruth, my only... I see her turning strange. A secret child she has become this past year, and shrivels as if a sucking mouth were pulling on her life, too. And so I thought to send her to your Tichuba. To Tichuba? What may teach you, but... knows how to speak to the dead, Mr. Paris. Goody Anne, it is a formidable sin to conjure up the dead. I take it on my soul. For who else may surely tell us what persons murdered my babies? Woman! They were murdered, Mr. Paris. And mark this for a proof. Mark it. Last night, my Ruth was ever so close to their little spirits. I know it, sir. For how else is she struck dumb now? Except some power of darkness would stop her mouth, too. It's a marvelous sign, Mr. Paris. Don't you understand it, sir? There is a murdering witch among us bound to keep herself in the dark. Let your enemies make of it what they will. You cannot blink it more. And you were conjuring spirits last night. Not I, sir. Tituba and Ruth. Abigail! What proper payment for my charity. Now I am undone. You are not undone. Let you take hold here. Wait for no one to charge you. Declare it yourself. You have discovered witchcraft. In my house. In my house, Thomas, they will topple me with this. They will make a bitter. Your pardon, sir. I only thought to see how Betty is. Why aren't you home? Who is with Ruth? Her grandma come. I think she's improved a little. She gave a powerful sneeze before. Oh, there's a sign of life. I'd fear no more, Goody Putnam. It were a grand sneeze. Another like it will shake her wits together, I'm sure. Will you leave me now, Thomas? I would pray a while alone. Uncle, you've prayed since midnight. Why do you not go down and speak with no. him? No. No, I have no answer for that crowd. I will wait here till Mr. Hale arrives. 
If you will, Goody Ann. Now look you, sir. Let you strike out against the devil and the village will bless you for it. Come down. Speak to them. Pray with them. They are thirsting for your word, mister. Surely you will pray with them. I will lead them in a psalm, but let you speak nothing of witchcraft yet. I will not discuss it. The cause is yet unknown. I have had enough contention since I came. I want no more. Mercy, you go home to Ruth. Do you hear? Aye, ma'am. Should she leap toward the window, you cry for me at once. I will, uncle. There is a terrible power in her arms today. How is Ruth sick? It's weirdish, I know not. She seems to walk like a dead one since last night. Betty? Betty? Now stop this, Betty. Sit up now. Have you tried beating her? I gave Ruth a good one and it waked her for a minute. Here, let me have her. No. He'll be coming back up soon. Listen now. If they be questioning us, tell them we danced. I told them as much already. Aye, and what more? He knows Tichaba conjured Ruth's sisters to come out of the grave. And what more? He saw you naked. <gasps> oh, Jesus. What do we do? The village is out. I just come from the farm. The whole country's talking witchcraft. They'll be calling us witches, Abby. She means to tell. I know it. Abby, we've got to tell. Witchery's a hanging error. A hanging like they done in Boston two years ago. We must tell the truth, Abby. You'll only be whipped for dancing and the other things. <laughs> we'll be whipped. I never done it, Abby. I only looked. Oh, you're a great one for looking, aren't you, Mary Warren? What a grand peeping courage you have. <laughs> Betty? Betty? Now, Betty, dear, wake up now. It's Abigail. <laughs> I'll beat you, Betty. No! <laughs> My, you seem improving. I talked to your papa, and I told him everything. I want my mama. What ails you, Betty? Your mama's dead and buried. I'll fly. Let me fly to mama. I told him everything he knows now. He knows everything. No, you drank blood, Abby. You didn't tell him that. Betty, you never say that again. You will never you say did. that. You did. You drank a charm to kill John Proctor's wife. Shut it. You drank a charm to kill Betty Proctor. Shut it. Oh. All of you, we danced. And Tichaba conjured Ruth Putnam's dead sisters, and that is all. And mark this, let either of you breathe a word, or the edge of a word about the other things, and I will come to you in the black of some terrible night, and I will bring a pointy reckoning that will shudder you. And you know I can do it. I saw Indians smash my dear parents' heads on the pillow next to mine, and I've seen some reddish work done at night, and I can make you wish you'd never seen the sun go down. Now you, sit up and stop this. What's got her, Abby? She's going to die at the cinder concert. I said Abby, shut it, Mary Warren. I'm just going home, Mr. Proctor. Be you foolish, Mary Warren. Be you deaf. I forbid you leave the house, did I not? How shall I pay you? I'm looking for you more often than my cows. I only come to see the great doings in the world. I'll show you a great doing on your arse one of these days. Now get you home. My wife is waiting with your work. I I'd best be off. I have my Ruth to watch. Good morning, Mr. Proctor. So she flies, huh? <laughs> Where be the wings? Gad. I'd almost forgot how strong you are, John Proctor. <laughs> What's this mischief here? Oh, she's just gone silly somehow. The road past my house is a pilgrimage to Salem all morning. The town's mumbling witchcraft. Oh, gosh. We were dancing in the woods last night. Ah. My uncle leapt in on us. She took fright, is all. You're wicked yet, aren't you? <laughs> You'll be clapped in the stocks before you're 20. Give me a word, John. A soft word. No, Abby, that's done with. You come five miles to see a silly girl fly. I know you better. I come to see what mischief your uncle's brewing now. John. Put it out of mind, Abby. John, I'm waiting for you every night. Abby, I never give you hope to wait for me. There's something better than hope, I think. Put it out of mind, Abby. I'll not be coming for you more. You're surely sporting with me. You know me better. I know how you clutched my back behind your house and sweated like a stallion whenever I came near. Or did I dream that? If she put me out, you cannot pretend it were you. I saw your face when she put me out, and you loved me then, and you do now. Abby, that's a 
wild thing to say. A wild thing may say wild things. But not so wild, I think. I've seen you since you put me out. I've seen you nights. I've hardly left my farm this seven months. I have a sense for heat, John. And yours has drawn me to my window. And I've seen you looking up, burning in your loneliness. You tell me you've never looked up at my window. I may have looked up. And you must. You're no wintry man. I know you, John. I know you. I cannot sleep for dreaming. I cannot dream. But I wake and walk about the house as though I find you coming through some door. Child, child. How do you call me child? Abby, I may think of you softly from time to time, but I will cut off my hand before I'll ever reach for you again. Wipe it out of mind. We never touched Abby. Aye, but we did. Aye, but we did not. Oh, I marvel how such a strong man may let such a sickly wife... You'll speak nothing of Elizabeth. She's blackening my name in the village. She's telling lies about me. She's a cold, sniveling woman, and you... Bend her. You look for a whipping. I look for John Proctor, who took me from my sleep and put knowledge in my heart. I never knew what pretense Salem was. I never knew the lying lessons I was taught by all these Christian women and their covenanted men. And now you bid me tear the light out of my eyes. I will not. I cannot. You love me, John Proctor. And whatever sin it is, you love me yet. Abby. Oh, John. John, pity me. Pity me. What is that? What is that? What's she doing? What's ailing you, girl? Stop that way. What Stop that way. What's happened? What are you doing to her? Betty. Betty. Child. Child. She heard you sing and suddenly she's up and screaming. The psalm. The psalm. She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. No, God forbid. Mercy. Run to the doctor. Tell him what has happened here. Aye, sir. Mark it for a sign. Mark it. That is a notorious sign of witchcraft afoot, goody nurse. A prodigious sign. My mother told me that. When they cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. Rebecca. Rebecca, go to her. We're lost. She suddenly cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. Now, now. There is hard sickness here, Giles Curry. So please to keep the quiet. I've not said a word. No one here can testify I've said a word. Is she going to fly again? I hear she flies. Man, be quiet now. What have you done? What do you make of it, Rebecca? Goody nurse, will you go to my Ruth and see if you can wake her? I think she'll wake in time. <laughs> Pray calm yourselves. Uh, I have 11 children, and I'm 26 times her grandma, and I've seen them all through their silly seasons. And when they come upon them, well, they'll run the devil bow-legged, keeping up with their mischief. I think she'll wake her huh? when she's tired of it. <laughs> oh, the spirit of a child. It's like a child. You can never catch it by running after it. No, you must stand still. And for love, it will soon itself come back. Aye, that's the truth of it, Rebecca. But this is no silly season, Rebecca. My Ruth is bewildered. She cannot eat. Perhaps she isn't hungered yet. <gasps> Oh, I hope you've not decided to go in search of loose spirits. Mr. Paris, I've heard promise of that outside. A wide opinions running in the parish that the devil may be among us. <laughs> I would satisfy them that they are wrong. Then let you come out and call them wrong. Did you consult with the wardens before you called this minister to look for devils? He's not coming to look for devils. Then what's he coming for? There be children dying in the village, mister. I see none dying. This society will not be a bag to swing around your head, Mr. Putnam. Did you call a meeting? I am sick head? of meetings. Cannot the man turn his head without he have a meeting? He may turn his head, but not to hell. Pray, John, be calm. Oh, Mr. Paris, I think you'd best send Mr. Hale back as soon as he come. This will start us all to arguing again in the society. We thought to have peace this year. I think we should rely on the doctor now. And good prayer. The doctor is baffled, Rebecca. Well, if so he is, then let us go to God for the cause of it. 
There is prodigious danger in the seeking out of loose spirits. I, I fear it. I fear it. Let us rather blame ourselves. Then How may we blame ourselves? I am one of nine sons. The Putnam seed have peopled this province, and yet I have but one child left of eight, and now she shrivels? I cannot fathom that. Aye, but I must. Do you think it God's work that you should never lose a child? Or a grandchild either? And I bury all but one? There are wheels within wheels in this village, I and fires within fires. When Reverend Hale comes, you will proceed to look for signs of witchcraft here. You cannot command, Mr. Paris. We vote by name in this society, not by acreage. I have never heard you worry so on the society, Mr. Proctor. I do not think I've seen you at Sabbath meetings since snow flew. I have trouble enough with that. I come five miles to hear him preach only hellfire and bloody damnation. What? Take it to heart, Mr. Paris. And many others who stay away from church these days because you hardly ever mention God anymore. Why, that's a drastic charge. No, no, it is somewhat true. There are many that quail to bring their children. Well, I do not preach for children, Rebecca. It is not the children who are unmindful of their obligations toward this ministry. Are there really those unmindful? I should say the better half of Salem Village. And more than that. Where is my wood? My contract provides I be supplied with all my firewood. I am waiting since November for a stick. And even in November, I had to show my frostbitten hands like some London beggar. You are allowed six pound a year to buy your wood, Mr. Paris. I regard that six pound as part of my salary. I am paid little enough without I spend six pound on firewood. Sixty plus six for firewood. My salary is sixty-six pound, Mr. Proctor. I am not some preaching farmer with a book under my arm. I am a graduate of Harvard College. Aye. <laughs> And well instructed in arithmetic. <laughs> you would look far for a man of my kind for 60 pound a year, Mr. Corey. I am not used to this poverty. I gave up a thrifty business in the Barbados to serve the Lord, and I cannot fathom it why I am persecuted here. I cannot offer up one proposition, but it be met with a howling riot of argument. I have often wondered if the devil be in it somewhere. I cannot understand you people otherwise. Mr. Paris, you are the first minister ever to demand the deed to this house. Man, don't a minister deserve a house to live in? To live in, yes. But to ask ownership is like you shall own the meeting house itself. On the last meeting I were at, you talked so long on deeds and mortgages. I thought it were an auction. I want a mark of confidence is all. I am your third minister in seven years. I do not wish to be thrown out like the cat at the whim of some majority. No, you people, you seem not to comprehend that the minister is the Lord's man in the church. He is not to be so easily crossed and contradicted. Aye. There will either be obedience or the church will burn, as hell is burning. Can you speak one minute without we land in hell? I am sick of hell. It is not for you to say what is good for you to hear. I may speak my heart, I think. What? Are we Quakers? We are not Quakers here yet, Mr. Proctor. And you may tell that to your followers. My followers? Yes, your followers. There is a party in this church. I am not blind. There is a faction and a party. Against you. Against him and all authority. Why, then I must find it and join it. <gasps> he does not mean that. He confessed it now. I mean it solemnly, Rebecca. I like not the smell of this authority. No, you cannot break charity with your minister. You're another kind, John. Clasp his hand. Make your peace. I have crops to sow and lumber to drag home. Come along, Giles, let's find the party. He says there's a party. I've changed my opinion of this man, John. Mr. Paris, I beg your pardon. I never thought you had so much iron in you. Thank you, Giles. It suggests to the mind what the trouble be among us all these years. Now think on it. Wherefore is everybody suing everybody else? Now think on it now. It's a deep thing and dark as a pit. I have been six times in court this year. Is it the devil's fault a man may not bid you good morning without you clap him for defamation? You're old, Giles. You're not hearing so well as you did. Now, John Proctor, I've only last month collected four pound damages for you publicly saying I burned the roof off your house. <laughs> and I would go to court again. I never said no such thing, but I paid you for it. So I hope I can call you deaf without charge. Ah, come along, Giles. Help me drag my lumber home. A moment, Mr. Proctor. What lumber is that you're dragging, if I may ask you? My lumber from out my forest by the riverside. Why, we are surely gone wild this year. What anarchy is this? That tract is in my bounds. What? It is in, in your bounds. bounds. I bought that tract from Goody Nurse's husband five months ago. Well, he had no right to sell it. 
It stands clear in my grandfather's will ah. that all the lands between the river and... Your grandfather had a habit of willing land that never belonged to him, if I may say it plain. That's God's truth. He nearly willed away my north pasture. But he knew I'd break his fingers before he'd set his name to it. Let's get your lumber home, John. I feel a sudden will to work coming on. You load one oak of mine, you'll fight to drag it home. Aye, and we'll win, too, Putnam, this fool and I. Come on. I'll clap a writ on you, Corey. I'll have my men on you. <laughs> Pray you, someone take these books. Mr. Hale. Oh, it's good to see you again, sir. My, they're heavy. They must be. They are weighted with authority. Well, you do come prepared. We shall need hard study if it comes to tracking down the old boy. You cannot be Rebecca Nurse. I am, sir. Do you know me? It's strange how I knew you, but I suppose you look as such a good soul should. Oh. We have all heard of your great charities in Beverly. Do you know this gentleman, Mr. Thomas Putnam, and his good wife, Anne? Putnam? I had not expected such distinguished company, sir. It does not seem to help us today, Mr. Hale. We look to you to come to our house and save our child. Your child ails too. Her soul, her soul seems blown away. She sleeps and yet she walks. She cannot eat. Cannot eat? Do you men have afflicted children? No, no, no. These men are farmers. John Proctor. He don't believe in witches. I never spoke on witches one way or the other. Now, will you come along, Giles? Uh, no, uh, no, John, I think not. I have a few queer questions of my own to ask this fellow. I hear you to be a sensible man, Mr. Hale. I hope you'll leave some of it in Salem. Will you look at my daughter, sir? She has tried to leap out the window. We discovered her on the high road this morning, waving her arms as though she'd fly. She tries to fly. She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name, Mr. Hale. That's a sure sign of witchcraft afloat. No, no. Now let me instruct you. We cannot look to superstition in this. The devil is precise. The marks of his presence are as definite as stone. And I must tell you all that I will not proceed unless you are prepared to believe me if I should find no bruise of hell upon her. Oh, it is agreed, sir. It is agreed. We will abide by your judgment. Good, then. Now, sir, what were your first warning of this strangeness? Why, sir, I discovered my daughter Betty and my niece Abigail and ten or twelve other girls dancing in the forest last night. You permit dancing? No, no, it was secret. Mr. Paris, a slave, has knowledge of conjuring. We sir. cannot be sure of that, Goody Ann. I know it, sir. I sent my child. She should learn from Tichaba, who murdered her sisters. Goody Ann, you sent a child to conjure up the dead. Let God judge me, not you, not you, Rebecca. I'll not have you blaming me more. Sir, is it a natural work to lose seven children before they live a day? Seven dead in childbirth. I. Hmm. Hmm. What book is that? What's there, sir? Here is all the invisible world, caught, defined, and calculated. In these books, the devil stands stripped of all of his brute disguises. Here are all your familiar spirits, your incubi and succubi, your witches that go by land, by sea, and by air, your wizards of the night and of the day. Have no fear now. We shall find him out if he has come among us. And I mean to crush him utterly if he has shown his face. Will it hurt the child, sir? I cannot tell. If she is truly in the devil's grip, we may have to rip and tear to get her free. I think I'll go then. <laughs> I am too old for this. Why, Rebecca, we may open the boil of all our troubles here today. Oh, let us hope for that. I go to God for you, sir. I hope you do not mean to go to Satan here. I wish I knew. Come, Mr. Hale, let's get on. Sit you here. Mr. Hale, I have always wanted to ask a learned man, what signifies the reading of strange books? What books? I cannot tell. She hides them. Who hides them? Martha, my wife. I have waked at night many a time and found her in a corner reading of a book. Now, what do you make of that? Why, that's not necessarily a sign It discomforts me. Uh, last night, mark this, I tried and tried and could not say my prayers. And then she closed her book and walks out of the house and suddenly, mark this, I could pray again. Oh, the stoppage of prayer. That is strange. 
I'll speak with you further on that. Oh, I'm not saying she's touched the devil now, but I'd admire to know what books she reads and why she hides them. She'll not answer me, you see. I will discuss it. Now mark me. If the devil is in her, you will witness some frightful wonders in this room, so please to keep your wits about you. Mr. Putnam, stand close in case she flies. Now, Betty. Betty, dear, will you sit up? B Be Betty. Betty, can you hear me? I am John Hale, minister of Beverly. I have come to help you, dear. Do you remember my two little girls in Beverly? How can it be the devil? Why should he choose my house to strike? We have all manner of licentious people in the village. What victory would the devil have to win a soul already bad? It is the best the devil wants. And who is better than the minister? That's deep, Mr. Parris. Deep, deep. Betty, answer, Mr. Hale. Betty. Betty, does someone afflict you, child? It need not be a woman, mind you, nor a man. Perhaps some bird, invisible to others, comes to you. Perhaps a pig, a mouse, or any beast at all. Is there some figure bids you fly? In nomine domini, sabot, sui filiique, ite ad infernus. Abigail, what sort of dancing were you doing with her in the forest? Why, common dancing is all. I think I ought to say, I saw a kettle on the grass. Where they were that dancing. were only soup. What sort of soup were in this kettle, Abigail? Why, it were beans and lentils. Mr. Parrish, think... you did not notice, did you, any living thing in the soup? Uh, a mouse, perhaps, a spider, a frog? I believe there were some movement in that the That jumped in. We never put what it What jumped in? Why, a very little frog jumped in. A frog, Abigail. Abigail, it may be that your cousin is dying. Did you call the devil last night? I never called him. Tituba. <laughs> She Tichuba. called the devil. I should like to speak with Tichuba. Would you bring her up, Goody Anne? How did she call him? I know not. She spoke Barbados. Did you notice any strangeness when she called him? A uh, sudden cold wind, perhaps, a uh, trembling below the ground? I didn't see no devil. Betty? Betty? You cannot evade me, Abigail. Did your cousin drink any of the brew in that kettle? She never drank it. Did you drink it? No, sir. Did Tichuba ask you to drink it? She tried, but I refused. Why are you concealing? <laughs> Have you sold yourself to Lucifer? I never sold myself. I'm a good girl. I'm a proper girl. She made me do it. She made Betty do it. Abby! She makes me drink blood. Blood? My baby's blood. No, no, chicken blood. I give she chicken blood. Woman, have you enlisted these children for the devil? No, no, sir, I don't truck with no devil. Then why can she not wake? Are you silencing this child? I love me, Betty. You have sent your spirit out upon this child, have you not? Are you gathering souls for the devil? She sends her spirit on me in church. She makes me laugh at prayer. She have often laughed at prayer. She comes to me every night to go and drink blood. You begged me to conjure. She begged me to make charm. Don't lie. She comes to me while I sleep. She's always making me dream corruptions. What make you say that, Abby? Sometimes I wake and find myself standing in the open doorway and have a stitch on my body. I always hear her laughing in my sleep. I hear her singing her Barbados songs. And Mr. Reverend, I never... I want you to wake this child. I have no power on this child, sir. You most certainly do, and you will free her from it now. When did you compact with the devil? I don't compact with no devil. You will confess yourself, or I will take you out and whip you to your death, Tituba. This woman must be hanged. She must be taken and hanged. No, 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 don't hang, Tituba. I tell him I don't desire to wait for him, sir. The devil? Then you saw him. Now, Tituba. I know that when we bind ourselves to hell, it is very hard to break with it, but we are going to help you tear yourself Mr. free. Mr. Reverend, I do believe somebody else bewitching these children. Who? I don't know, sir, but the devil got him numerous witches. Does he? Did you look into my eyes? Come, look into me. Now, you would be a good Christian woman, would I, you not, sir, Tichuba? a good Christian woman. And you love these little children. I, sir, I don't desire to hurt little children. And you love God, Tichuba. I love God with all my now, being. Now, in God's holy name. Oh, bless him. And to his bless glory. Him. Eternal open yourself, glory. Tichuba, open yourself oh, and let God's oh, holy light Lord. shine on you. Now, when the devil comes to you, does he ever come with another person? Perhaps someone else in this village, someone that you know. Who came with him? Sarah Good. Did you ever see Sarah Good with him? Or Osborne? Was it a man or a woman? Man, woman? It was woman. What woman? You said woman. Well, it was black, dark, and I... You could see him. Why well, not her? Well, it was always talking and walking and running around and carrying on. Out of Salem? Salem witches? Yes, sir, I believe so, sir. Did you, you must have no fear to tell us who they are. 
You understand? We will protect you. The devil can never overcome a minister. You understand that, do you not? I, sir, I do. You have confessed yourself to witchcraft, and that speaks a wish to come to heaven's side, and we will bless you for oh, it, Oh, bless you, Mr. Hay. You are God's instrument put in our hands to help us discover the devil's agents among us. You are selected, Tijaba. You are chosen to help us cleanse our village. So speak <laughs> utterly, Tijaba. Turn your back on him and face God. Face God, Tijaba, and God will protect you. Oh, God protect Tijaba. Who came to you with the devil? Two, three, four, how many? Three, four. There were four. Who, who? Their names, their names. Oh, how many times he bid me kill you, Mr. Parr? Kill me, he said. Mr. Farris must be killed. He said, Mr. Farris no goody man. Mr. Farris mean man. He no gentleman. He bid me rise out my bed and cut your throat. But I tell him, no, I don't hate that man. I don't want to kill that man. But he say, you work for me, Chichi, but I make you free. I give you a pretty dress to wear and put you way high up in the air and you're going to fly back to Barbados. But I tell him, no, you lie, devil, you lie. And he come one stormy night to me and he say, look, I have white people belong to me. And I look, and there was Goody Good. Sarah Good. I, sir, and Goody Osborne. I knew it. Goody Osborne was midwife to me three times. I begged of you, Thomas, did I not? I begged him not to send for Osborne because I feared her. My baby's always shriveled in her hands. Take courage, Tichy, but you must give us all of their names. How can you bear to see this child suffering? Look at her. Look at her, Tichaba. Look at her God-given innocence. Her soul is so tender. We must protect her. The devil is out and preying on her like a beast upon the flesh of the pure lamb. God will bless you for your help. I, I want to open myself. I want the light of God. I want the sweet love of Jesus. I dance for the devil. I saw him. I wrote in his book. I go back to Jesus. I kiss his hand. I saw Sarah Good with the devil. I saw Goody Osborne with the devil. I saw Bridget Bishop with the devil. I saw George Jacobs with the devil. Oh. I saw Goody Howe with the devil. She speaks. Glory to she God. She Broken they are oh. free. I saw Martha Bellows with the oh. devil. I saw Goody Sibber with the devil. The marshal. I will call the marshal. I saw Alice Barrow with the Let devil. Let the marshal bring iron. I saw Goody Hawkins with the What keeps you so late? It's almost dark. Ah, I were planting far out to the forest edge. Oh, you're done then. Aye, the farm is seeded. The boys asleep. Oh, they will be soon. I pray now for fair summer. Aye. Are you well today? I am. Supper? Mm, aye. It is a rabbit. Oh, in Jonathan's trap? No, she walked into the house this afternoon. I found her sitting in the corner like she come to visit. <laughs> That's a good sign, walking in. Pray God. Hurt my heart to strip her, poor rabbit. Mm, it's well seasoned. I took great care. Mm. She's tender. I. I think we'll see green fields soon. Oh. It's warm as blood beneath the clods. That's well. If the crop is good, I'll buy George Jacob's heifer. How would that please you? Aye, it would. I mean to please you, Elizabeth. I know it, John. I. Uh, this farm's a continent when you go foot by foot dropping seeds into it. Oh, it must be. You ought to bring some flowers into the house. Oh, I forgot. I will tomorrow. Well, it's winter in here yet. 
On Sunday next, let you come with me and we'll walk the farm together. I never see such a load of flowers on the earth. Ah, lilacs have a purple smell. Lilac is the smell of nightfall, I think. Ah, Massachusetts is a beauty in the spring. Aye, it is. I think you're sad again, are you? You come so late, I thought you'd gone to Salem this afternoon. Why, I have no business in Salem. You did speak of going earlier this week. I thought better of it since. Mary Warren's there today. Why, you let her? You heard me forbid her to go to Salem anymore. I couldn't stop her. It is a fault. It is a fault, Elizabeth. You're the mistress here, not Mary Warren. She frightened all my strength away. Tell me, that mouse frightened you, Elizabeth, well, you. It is a mouse, no more. I forbid her go. And she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince and says to me, I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I'm an official of the court. The court? What court? Aye, it is a proper court they have now. They've sent four judges out of Boston, she says, weighty magistrates of the general court, and at the head sits the deputy governor of the province. <laughs> She's mad. I would to God she were. There be 14 people in the jail now, she says. And they'll be tried, and the court have power to hang them, too, she says. Oh, and they'll not hang. The deputy governor promise hanging if they'll not confess, John. And the town's gone wild, I think. She speak of... Abigail. And I thought she were a saint to hear her. Abigail brings the other girls into the court. And where she walks, the crowd will part like the sea for Israel. And folks are brought before them, and if they scream and howl and fall to the floor, the person's clapped in the jail for bewitching them. It is a black mischief. I think you must go to Salem, John. I think so. You must tell them it is a fraud. Aye, it is. It is, surely. Let you go to Ezekiel Cheever. He knows you well. And tell him what she said to you last week in her uncle's house. Oh, she said it had not to do with witchcraft, did she not? Aye, she did. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. Aye, they must. They must. It's a wonder they do believe her. I would go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I'll think on it. You cannot keep it, John. I know I cannot keep it. I say I will think on it. Good, then. Let you think on it. I'm only wondering how I may prove what she told me, Elizabeth. If the girl's a saint now, I think it is not easy to prove she's fraud and the town gone so silly. She told it to me in a room alone. I have no proof for it. You were alone with her? For a moment, alone, I... Why, then it is not as you told me. For a moment, I say the others come in soon after. Do as you wish, then. Woman, I'll not have your suspicion anymore. I have no... I'll not have it. Then let you not earn it. You doubt me yet. John, if it were not Abigail, you must go to hurt. Would you falter now? I think not. Now, look, I see what I see, John. Elizabeth, you will not judge me more. I have good reason to think before I charge fraud on Abigail, and I will think on it. Let you look to your own improvement before you go to judge your husband more. I have forgot Abigail. And I... Spare me! You forget nothing and forgive nothing. Learn charity, woman. I've gone tiptoe in this household seven months, and she is gone. I've not moved from there to there without, I think, to please you. And still an everlasting funeral marches round your heart. I cannot speak, but I am doubted every moment judged for lies as though I come into a court when I come into this house. John, you are not open with me. You saw her with a crowd, you said. Now you I say... I'll my honesty no more, Elizabeth. John, no I am... No more! I should have brought you down when first you told me your suspicion, but I wilted, and like a Christian, I confessed. Confessed? Some dream I had must have mistaken you for God that day. Well, you're not. You're not, and let you remember it. Let you look sometimes for the goodness in me and judge me not. I do not judge you. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you. I never thought you but a good man, John. Only somewhat bewildered. Uh, Elizabeth, your justice would freeze beer. How do you go to Salem when I forbid it? Do you mark me? I'll whip you if you leave this house again. I'm sick, I'm sick, Mr. Proctor. Pray, pray, hurt me not. 
my insides are all shuddery. I'm in the proceedings all day, sir. And what of these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep this house as you paid nine pound a year to do, and my wife not wholly well? I made a gift for you today, Goody Proctor. I had to sit long hours in the chair, and I passed the time with sewing. Why, thank you. Oh, if it's a fair puppet. We must all love each other now, Goody Proctor. Ah, indeed we must. Well, I'll get up early in the morning and clean the house. I must sleep now. Mary, is it true there'll be 14 women arrested? No, sir, there'll be 39 now. She's weeping. What ails you, child? Goody Osborne will hang. Hang. Hang, you say? I... The deputy governor will permit it. He sentenced her. He must. But not Sarah Good, for Sarah Good confessed, you see. Confessed to what? That she sometimes made a compact with Lucifer and wrote her name in his black book with her blood and bound herself to torment Christians till God's thrown down and we must all worship hell forevermore? But surely you know what a jabberer she is. Did you tell them that? Mr. Proctor, in open court, she near choked us all to death. I'll choke you. She sent her spirit out. Oh, Mary, Mary, she... She tried to kill me many times, Goody Proctor. Oh, I never heard you mention that before. Well, I never knew it before. I, I, I never knew anything before. When she come into the court, I say to myself, I must not accuse this woman. For she sleep in ditches and so very old and poor. But then she sit there denying and denying. And I feel a misty coldness climbing up my back. And the skin of my skull begin to creep. And I feel a clamp around my neck. And I cannot breathe air. And then I hear a voice. A screaming voice. And it were my voice. And all at once I remembered everything she's done to me. Why, what has she done to you? So many times, Mr. Proctor, she she come to this very door begging bread and a cup of cider. And mark this, whenever I turn her away empty, she mumble. Mumble? She may mumble and she's hungry. I, what does she mumble? Oh, you must remember, Goody Proctor, last month, a uh, Monday, I think, she walked away and I thought my guts would burst for two days after. Do you remember it? Why, I do, I think. I, but... So I told that to Judge Hathorne and he asked her so. Sarah Good, says he, what curse do you mumble that this girl must fall sick after turning you away? And then she replies, why, your excellence, no curse at all. I only say my commandments. I hope I may say my commandments, says and she. And that's an upright answer. Aye, but then Judge Hathorne say, recite for us your commandments. And of all of the ten, she could not say a single one. She never knew no commandments, and they had her in a flat lie. And so condemned her. They must when she condemned herself. But the proof, the proof. I told you the proof. It's hard proof. It's hard as a rock. The judges said. You will not go to the court again, Mary. I must tell you, sir, I will be gone every day now. I'm amazed you do not see what weighty work we do. What work you do? A strange work for a Christian girl to hang old women. Mr. Proctor, they will not hang if they confess. Sarah Good will only sit in jail a while. It is a wonder for you. Think on this. Goody Good is pregnant. Pregnant? Are they mad? The woman's near to 60. They had Dr. Griggs examine her, and she's full to the brim. Oh. Smoking a pipe all these years and no husband either. Oh, she say, thank God, they'll not hurt the innocent child, but be that not a marvel. You must see it, sir. It's God's work we do. So I'll be gone every day for some time now. I'm an official of the court, they say, and I'll be... Official you! I'll not stand whipping anymore. Mary, promise now you'll stay at home. the devil's loose in Salem, Mr. Proctor. We must discover where he's hiding. I'll whip the devil out of you. I saved her life today! But I, I said I'd never seen no sign you ever sent your spirit out to hurt no one. And seeing as I do listen closely to you, they dismissed Who it. Who accused me? I'm bound by law. I cannot tell it. Only hope you'll not be so sarcastical no more. Four judges and the king's deputy sat to dinner with us but an hour ago. I would have you speak civilly to me from this out. Get to bed. I will not be ordered to bed anymore, Mr. Proctor. I am 18 and a woman. However single. If you wish to sit up, then sit up. I wish to go to bed. Good night, then. Good night. Oh, the noose, the noose is up. There'll be no noose. She wants me dead. I knew all week it would come to this. They dismissed it. You heard and her say. And what if tomorrow she will cry me out until they take me? Sit you down. She wants me dead. John, you know it. I say sit down. Oh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Fear nothing. I'll find Ezekiel Chiva. I'll tell him she said it were all sport. John, 
With so many in the jail, more than Cheever's help is needed now, I think. Would you favor me with this? Go to Abigail. What am I to say to Abigail? John, grant me this. You have a faulty understanding of young girls. There is a promise made in any bed. What promise? Spoke or silent. A promise is surely made. And she may dote on it now. I'm sure she does. And thinks to kill me than to take my place. It is her dearest hope, John. I know it. There be a thousand names. Why does she call mine? There be a certain danger in calling such a name. I am no goody good that sleeps in ditches, nor Osborne drunk and half-witted. She dare not call out such a farmer's wife, but there be monstrous profit in it. She thinks to take my place, John. She cannot think it. John, have you ever shown her somewhat of contempt? She cannot pass you in the church, but you will blush. I may blush for my sin. I think she sees another meaning in that blush. And what see you? What see you, Elizabeth? I think you be somewhat ashamed, for I am there and she's so close. When will you know me, woman? Were I stone, I would have cracked for shame this seven months. Then go and tell her she's a whore. Whatever promise she may sense, break it, John, break it. But then I'll go. Oh, how unwillingly. <laughs> I will curse her harder than the oldest cinder in hell, but pray begrudge me not my anger. Your anger, Woman, I... Oh, am I so base? Do you truly think me I base? I never called you base. Then how do you charge me with such a promise? The promise the stallion gives a mare I gave that girl. Then why do you anger with me when I bid you break it? Because it speaks deceit, and I am honest. But I'll plead no more. I see now your spirit twists around the single error of my life. And I will never tear it free. You will tear it free when you come to know that I will be your only wife or no wife at all. She has an arrow in you yet, John Proctor, and you know it well. Good evening. Oh. Why, Mr. Hayden, good evening, sir. Come in, come in. I hope I do not startle you. Oh, no, no. It's only that I heard no horse. You are good wife Proctor. Uh, I am Elizabeth. I hope you are not off to bed yet. No, no. We are not used to visitors after dark, but you are welcome, sir. Won't you sit you down? I will. Let you sit, good wife Proctor. Will you drink cider, Mr. Hale? Uh, no. No, it rebels my stomach. And I have some further traveling yet tonight. Uh, sit you down, sir. I will not keep you long, but I do have some business with you. Business of the court? No, no, I come of my own without the court's authority. Hear me. I know not whether you are aware, sir, but your wife's name is mentioned in the court. Aye, we know it. Our Mary Warren told us we are entirely amazed. I am a stranger here, sir, as you know. And in my ignorance, I find it hard to draw a clear opinion of them that come accused before the court. And so this afternoon, and now tonight, I go from house to house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's house. Rebecca's I... charged? God forbid such a one should be charged. She is, however, mentioned somewhere. Oh, you will never believe, I hope, that Rebecca trafficked with the devil. Woman, it is possible. Surely you cannot think it. This is a strange time, mister. No man may longer doubt that the powers of the dark are gathered in monstrous attack upon this village. There is now too much evidence in the court to deny it. You will agree, sir. Mm, I have no knowledge in that line, but I find it hard to believe. So pious a woman be secretly the devil's bitch after 70 years of such good prayer. Aye, but the devil is a wily one. You cannot deny it. However, she is far from accused, and I know she will not be. I thought, sir, to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you will permit me. Why, we have no fear of questions, sir. Good, then. In the book of record that Mr. Paris keeps, I note that you are rarely in the church on the Sabbath day. No, sir, you are mistaken. Twenty-six times in seventeen months, sir. I must call that... Rare. Will you tell me why you are so absent? 
Mr. Hale, I never knew I must account to that man whether I come to church or stay at home. My wife were ill this winter. So I am told. But you, mister, why could you not come alone? I surely did come when I could, and when I could not, I prayed in this house. Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. Aye, it does. And it tells me that a minister may pray to God without he have golden candlesticks upon the altar. What golden candlesticks? Since we built this church, there were pewter candlesticks upon the altar. Francis Nurse made them, you know, and a sweeter hand never touched a metal. Then Paris came. And for 20 weeks, he preached nothing but golden candlesticks until he had them. I labor the earth from dawn of day till blink of night. And I tell you true, sir, when I look to heaven and see my money glaring at his elbows, it hurt my prayer, sir. It hurt my prayer. I think sometimes a man dreams cathedrals, not clabbered meeting houses. And yet, mister, a Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Tell me, you have three children. I? Boys. How comes it that only two are baptized? I like it not that Mr. Parrish should lay his hand upon my baby. I'll not conceive it. I see no light of God in that man. Mr. Proctor, I must say it. That is not for you to decide. The man is ordained. Therefore, the light of God is in him. What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? No, no, no. I, I nailed the no, roof I... upon the church. I hung the door. Oh, did you? That's a good sign, then. May be that I've been too quick to bring the man to book, but you cannot think we ever desired the destruction of religion. I think that's in your mind, is it not? I have... I... <laughs> there is a softness in your record, sir. A softness. I think maybe we have been too hard on Mr. Paris. I think so. But sure, we never loved the devil here. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? I surely do. There be no mark of blame upon my life. I am a covenanted Christian woman. And you, Mr. <laughs> I'm sure I do. Let you repeat them, if you will. The commandments. Aye. Thou shalt not kill. Aye. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, nor make of thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You have said that twice, sir. Aye. Adultery. See, sir, between the two of us, we do know them all. I think it'd be a small fault. Theology, sir, is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. There'd be no love for Satan in this house, mister. I pray it. I pray it dearly. Well, then, I'll bid you good night. Mr. Hale, I think... You be suspecting me somewhat, are you not? Goody Proctor, I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health I, and good fortune. I think you must tell him, John. What's that? Will you tell him? I... I have no witness and cannot prove it except my word be taken, but I know the children's sickness had not to do with witchcraft. Not to do with witchcraft? Mr. Paris discovered them sporting in the woods. They were startled and took sick. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? Aye. Abigail Williams told you it had not to do with witchcraft? Yeah, she told me the day you came, sir. Why? Why did you keep this? I did not know until tonight that the world had gone daft with this nonsense. Nonsense, mister! I have myself examined Tichuba and Sarah Good and numerous others that have confessed themselves to dealing with the devil. They have confessed it. And why not if they be hanged for denying it? There are them that will swear to anything before they'll hang. Have you never thought of that? I have. I have indeed. And you? Would you testify to this in the court? I have not reckoned on going to court, but if I must, I will. You falter here. I falter nothing. I may wonder if my story be credited in such a court. I do wonder on it. 
when such a steady-minded minister as yourself would suspicion such a woman who never lied and cannot, and the world knows she cannot. I may falter somewhat, mister. I am no fool. Proctor, let you open with me now, for I have a rumor that troubles me. It is said that you hold no belief that there may even be witches in the world. Is that true, sir? I know not what I have said. I may have said it. I have wondered if there be witches in the world, although I cannot believe they come among us now. Then you do not believe. I have no knowledge, and if the Bible speaks of witches, I will not deny them. And you, woman? I cannot believe it. You cannot? Elizabeth, you bewilder me. I cannot think the devil may own a woman's soul, Mr. Hale, when she keeps an upright way, as I have. I am a good woman, I know it. And if you think that I may do only good work in the world and yet be secretly bound to Satan, then I must tell you, sir, I do not believe it. But, woman, you do believe there are witches if in the world? If you think that I am one, then I say there are none. You surely do not fly against the gospel. The she gospel believed the gospel, every word. Question Abigail Williams about the gospel, not myself. She did not mean to doubt the gospel, sir. You cannot think it. This is a Christian house, sir. A Christian house. God keep you both. Let the third child be quickly baptized. And go you without fail each Sunday into Sabbath prayer. And keep a solemn, quiet way among you. I think... John! Giles wants another. They take my wife. And his Rebecca. Rebecca's in the jail. Aye. Cheever come and take her in his wagon. We've only now come from the jail, and they won't even let us in to see them. They've surely gone wild now, Mr. Hale. Reverend Hale. Cannot you speak to the deputy governor? I'm sure he mistakes these Pray people. Pray calm yourself, Mr. My Nurse. wife, sir, my wife is the very brick and mortar of the church. And Martha Corey, there cannot be a woman closer yet to God than Martha. How is Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? For murder, she's charged. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putman's babies. What am I to do, Mr. Hale? Believe me, Mr. Nurse. If Rebecca Nurse be tainted, then there's nothing left to stop the whole green world from burning. Let you, let you rest upon the justice of the court. The court will send her home. I know it. You cannot mean that she will be tried in court. Nurse, though our hearts break, we cannot flinch. These are new times, sir. There is a misty plot afoot so subtle that we should be criminal were we to cling to old respects and ancient friendships now. I have seen too many frightful proofs of it in the court. The devil is alive in Salem. And we dare not quail to follow wherever the accusing finger points. How may such a woman murder children? Man, remember that until an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful in heaven. I never said my wife were a witch, Mr. Hale. I only said you were reading books. Mr. Corey, exactly what complaint were made against your wife? That bloody mongrel Walker charger. You see, he buy a pig of my wife four or five years ago, and the pig died soon after. So he comes dancing in for his money back. So my Martha, she says to him, Walcott, if you haven't the wit to feed a pig properly, you'll not live to own many, she says. Now he goes to court and claims that from that day to this, he cannot keep a pig alive for more than four weeks because my Martha bewitched them with her books. Good evening to you, Brocker. Why, Mr. Cheever, good evening. Good evening, all. Good evening, Mr. Hale. I hope you come not on business of the court. I do, Proctor. I, I'm the clerk of the court now, you know. Mm. It's a pity, Ezekiel, that an honest tailor might have gone to heaven must burn in hell. You'll burn for this, do you know it? Now, you know yourself. I must do as I'm told, Giles. You surely know that. And I'd as lief you'd not be sending me to hell. I like not the sound of it. I tell you, I like not the sound of it. Now, believe me, Proctor, how heavy be the law... All its tonnage I do carry on my back tonight. I have a warrant for your wife. No. You said she was charged. I know nothing of it. When was she charged? I'm given 16 warrant tonight, sir. She's one. Who charged her? Why, well, Abigail Williams charged her. On what proof? What proof? Yeah, Mr. Proctor, of little time. The court bid me to search your house, but I, I like not to search a house. So if you'll just hand me any puppets that your wife may keep here. Puppets? Why, I never kept no puppets, not since I were a girl. I spy a puppet, Goody Proctor. Oh, why, that's Mary's. Uh, would you please to give it to the me? The court discovered a text in puppets now. Do you keep any others in this house? No, not this one neither till tonight. What signifies a puppet? Why, a puppet? A puppet may signify... 
Now, woman, will you please to come with me? She will not fetch Mary here. No, no, I, I'm forbidden to leave her from my sight. You leave her out of sight and out of mind, mister. Fetch Mary here, Spit. What signifies a puppet, Mr. Cheever? Why? They say it may signify that... Why, why, why this? What's there? What is it? What is why, it? why? It is a needle. Herrick. Herrick. It is a needle. What signifies a needle? Why, this go hard with her, Proctor. This... I had my doubts, Proctor. I had my doubts, but here's calamity. You see it, sir? It is a needle. Why? What meaning has it? The girl. The Williams girl. Abigail Williams, sir. She sat to dinner tonight in Reverend Paris's house, and without word nor warning, she falls to the floor. Like a struck beast, he says, and screamed a scream a bull would weep to hear. And he goes to save her, and stuck two inches in the flesh of her belly, he draw a needle out, and demanding of her how she come to be so stabbed, she testify it were your wife's familiar spirit push it in. Has she done it herself? I hope you'll not be taking this for proof, mister. Tis hard proof. I find here a poppet Goody Proctor keeps. I have found it, sir. And in the belly of the poppet a needle is stuck. I tell you true, Proctor. I never warranted to see such proof of hell. And I bid you obstruct me not. Yes, now, Mary, how did this poppet come into my house? Well, the poppet that, sir. This poppet? This poppet? Well, I think it's mine. It is your poppet, is it? It is, sir. And how did it come into this house? I made it in the court, sir, and give it to Goody Proctor tonight. Now, sir, do you have it? Mary Warren, a needle had been found inside this poppet. No harm by it, sir. You stuck it in yourself. I believe I did, sir. And what say you now? Child, are you certain this be your natural memory? May it be perhaps that someone conjures you, even now, to say this. Conjures me? Why, no, sir. I'm entirely myself, I think. Let you ask Susanna Walcott. She saw me sewing it in court. Ask Abby. Abby set beside me when I made it. Bid him out, Mr. Hale. Surely your mind is settled now. Bid him be what gone. signifies a needle? Mary, you charge a cold and cruel murder on Abigail. Murder? I charge no Abigail murder. was stabbed tonight. A needle was found stuck into her belly. And she charges me? Aye. Why, the girl is murder. She must be ripped out of the world. You heard that, sir? Ripped out of the world. Herrick, you heard it. Out of my house. Hey, Proctor, you dare not touch the Out? Warrant. Man, you've ripped the deputy governor's warrant. Damn the deputy governor out of my house. Now, Proctor, Get Proctor. You're a broken minister. Proctor, if she is innocent, If the she court... is innocent. Why do you never want her to Paris be innocent or Abigail? Is the accuser always holy now? Were they born this morning as clean as God's fingers? I'll tell you what's walking Salem. Vengeance is walking Salem. We are what we always were in Salem, only now the crazy little children are jangling the keys of the kingdom, and common vengeance writes the law. This one, it's vengeance. I'll not give my wife to vengeance. I'll go, John. You'll not go. I have nine men outside. You cannot keep her. The law binds me, John. I cannot budge. Will you see her taken? Proctor, the court is just. You must... you wash your hands of this. John, I think I must go with them. Mary, now there is bread enough for the morning. You will bake in the afternoon. Help Mr. Proctor, as you were his daughter. You owe me that and much more. When the children wake, speak nothing of witchcraft. It will frighten them. I'll bring you home. I'll bring you soon. Oh, John, bring me soon. I will fall like an ocean on that court. Fear nothing, Elizabeth. I will fear nothing. Tell the children I have gone to visit someone sick. Herrick! Herrick! You don't chain her! Damn you, man, you'll not chain her! I'll put him on, I'll have it! John, I'll not have her chain! And yet, silent minister, it is fraud. You know it is fraud. What keeps you, man? Eric, Eric, I will pay you. I will surely pay you. In God's name, John, I cannot help myself. I must chain them all. Now let you keep inside this house until I am gone. Mr. Proctor, out of my sight. Charity, Proctor, charity. What I have heard in her favor, I will not fear to testify in the court. God help me, I cannot judge her guilty or innocent. I know not. Only this consider. The world goes mad, and it profit nothing that you should lay the cause of it to, a, to the vengeance of a little girl. You are a coward. Though you be ordained in God's own tears, you are a coward now. Brother, I cannot think God be provoked so grandly by such a petty cause. The jails are packed. 
Our greatest judges sit in Salem now, and... and Hangin's promised. Man, we must look to cause proportionate. With their murder done, perhaps, and never brought a light. Abomination. Some secret blasphemy that stinks to heaven. Think on cause, man, and let you help me to discover it. For there's your way. Believe me, there's your only way when such confusion strikes upon the world. Let you counsel among yourselves. Think on your village and what may have drawn from heaven such thundering wrath upon you all. I shall pray God open up our eyes. I never heard no murder done in Salem. Leave me, Francis. Leave me. John, tell me. Are we lost? Go home now, Giles. We'll uh, speak on it tomorrow. Or let you think on it. We'll come early, huh? Go now, Giles. Oh, good night, then. Mr. Proctor, very likely they'll let her come home once they're given proper evidence. Mary Wallace. You will come to the court with me. You'll tell it in the court. I cannot charge murder on Abigail. Uh, you'll tell the court how that puppet come here and who stuck that needle into it. You should kill me for saying that. Mary? Abby will charge lechery on you, Mr. Proctor. She's told you. I've known it, sir. She'll ruin you with it. I know she will. Good. Then her saintliness is done with. We'll slide together into our pit. You will tell the court what you know. I cannot. They'll turn on me. <laughs> My wife will never die for me. I will bring your guts into your mouth, but that goodness will never die for me. Now make your peace. Now hell and heaven grapple on our backs, and all our old pretense is ripped away. Make your peace. Peace. It is a providence, no great change. We are what we always were, only naked now. Aye, naked. And the wind, God's icy wind, will blow. I cannot. Aye. I cannot. Now, Martha Corey, there is abundant evidence in our hands to show that you have given yourself to the reading of fortunes. Do you deny it? I, I, I am innocent to a witch. I know not what a witch is. How do you know, then, that you are not a witch? Well, if I were, I'd know it. Why do you hurt these children? I do not hurt them. I scorn it. I have evidence for the cause. Well, Giles, you're you're sorry, man. Thomas Putnam is reaching out for land. Get the hand on my right hand, Excellency. Lies. I have evidence. And why will you not hear my evidence? Hands off, damn you! Let me go! Giles, Giles! Out of my way, Herrick. I bring evidence. You cannot go in there, Giles. It's a court. Pray be calm a moment. Are you, Mr. Hale? Go in there and demand I speak. A moment, sir, a moment. Or they'll be hanging my wife. How dare you come roaring into this court? Are you gone daft, Corey? You're not a Boston judge yet, Hathorne. You'll not call me daft. Who is this man? Giles Corey, sir. And a more contentious. I man. am asked the question, and I am old enough to answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Giles Corey. I have 600 acres, and timber in addition. It is my wife you'll be condemning. Now, now, how do you imagine to help her cause with such contemptuous riot? Now, be gone. Your old age alone keeps you out of jail for this. Now, they be telling lies about do my Do you wife, take it sir, upon yourself I... to determine what this court shall believe? And what it shall set aside... Oh, Your Excellency, we mean no disrespect. Disrespect, indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know it? Your Excellency, I only said you were reading books, sir. And they come and take her out of my books. house. What books? It is my third wife, sir. I never had no wife to be so taken with books. And I thought to find the cause of it, do you see? But it were no witch I blamed her for. I have broke charity with the woman. I have broke charity with her. Excellency, he claims hard evidence in his wife's defense. I think that in all justice, you then must... let him submit his evidence in proper affidavit. You certainly are aware of our procedures here, Mr. Hale. 
Clear this room. Come now, Giles. We're desperate, sir. We've come here three days and we cannot be heard. Who is this man? Francis Nurse, Excellency. His wife's Rebecca that were condemned this morning. Indeed. I'm amazed to find you in such uproar. I've heard only good reports of your character. I Mr. think Nurse. they must both be arrested in contempt, right sir. Right your police. Excellency, we have proof for your eyes. God forbid that you should close them to it. The girls, sir, the girls are frauds. What's that? We have proof of it, sir. They're all deceiving this you. This is contempt, sir. Contempt. Peace, Judge Hawthorne. Do you know who I am, Mr. Ness? I surely do, sir, and I think you must be a wise judge to be what you are. And do you know that near to 400 are in jail from Marblehead to Linen upon my signature? I do, sir. And 72 condemned to hang by that signature? Excellency, I never thought to say it to such a weighty judge, but you are deceived. Mary Warren, what are you about here? She would speak with the deputy governor. Did you not tell me Mary Warren was sick of bed? Well, she were, Your Honor. When I go to fetch her to the court last week, she said she was sick. She has been striving with her soul all week, Your Honor. She comes now to tell the truth of this to you. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, sir. This man is mischief. I think you must hear this girl, Please. sir. She... What would you tell us, Mary Warren? She never saw no spirit, sir. She never saw no spirit. Never. She has signed a deposition. No, no, no. I accept no depositions. Tell me, Mr. Proctor, have you given this story out to the village? We have not. They have come to overthrow this court, Your Honor. I this pray man you, is... Mr. Paris. Do you know, Mr. Proctor, the entire contention of the state in these trials is the voice of heaven is speaking through these children? I know that, sir. You, Mary Warren. How came you to cry out people for sending their spirits against you? It were pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. It were pretense, she says. Ah, and the other girls, Susanna Walcott and the others, they also are pretending? Aye, sir. Indeed. Surely your excellency would not think to let so vile a lie be spread in open court? Indeed not. But it strikes hard upon me that she will dare come here with such a tale. Now, Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall hear you or not, it is my duty to tell you this. We burn a hot fire here. It melts down all concealment. I know that, Let sir. me continue. I understand well a husband's tenderness may drive him to extravagance in defense of a wife. Are you sure in your conscience, mister, your evidence is the truth? It is, sir, and you will surely know it. And you thought to declare this revelation in an open court before the public I thought I would, sir, with your permission. Now, mister, what is your purpose in doing so? Why, I would free my wife. There lurks nowhere in your heart or hidden in your spirit any desire to undermine this court? Why, no, sir. I, your Excellency? Mr. Cheever? I think it'd be my duty, sir. Now, you'll not deny it, John. When we come to take his wife, he damned this court and ripped your warrant. Now you have it. He did that, Mr. Hale? Aye. He did. It were a temper, sir. I knew not what I did. Mr. Proctor. Aye, sir. Have you ever seen the devil? No, sir. You are in all respects a gospel Christian? I am, sir. Such a Christian that he will not come to church but once in a month. Not come to church? I, I have no love for Mr. Paris. It is no secret, but God I surely love. He plow on Sunday, sir. Plow on Sunday? I think it'd be evidence, John. I'm an official of the court. I cannot keep it. I have once or twice plowed on Sunday. I have three children, sir, and until last year, my land give little. You'll find other Christians that do plow on Sunday, if the truth be known. Your Honor, I cannot think you may judge the man on such evidence. I judge nothing. I tell you straight, mister, I have seen marvels in this court. I have seen people choked before my eyes by spirits. I have seen them stuck by pins. I have seen them slashed by daggers. I have until this moment not the slightest reason to suspect the children are deceiving me. Do you understand my meaning? Excellency, does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived so long with such upright reputation and that no mother... Do of... you read the gospel, Mr. Proctor? I read the gospel. I think not. Or surely you would know that Cain were an upright man, yet he did kill Abel. Aye, God tells us that. But who tells us Rebecca Nurse murdered seven babies by sending her spirit out on them? children only, and this one swears she lied to you. Judge Hathan. Sir. Uh, did you... Uh, sir. Yes, sir. Aye, she's the one. Mr. Proctor, this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states she is pregnant. My 
Why is she pregnant? There'd be no sign of it. We have examined her body. Oh, but if she says she's pregnant, then she must be. That woman will never lie, Mr. Danforth. She will not. Never, sir, never. Well, we have thought it too convenient to be credited. However, if I should tell you now that I will let her be kept another month, and if she begin to show her natural sign, you will have a living yet another year until she be delivered. What say you to it? Come, man. You say your only purpose is to save your wife. Good, then. She is saved for at least a year, and a year is long. What say you, sir? It is done now. Will you drop this charge? I think I cannot, sir. Then your purpose is somewhat larger? He has come to overthrow this court, Your Honor. These are my friends. Their wives I are judge also... you not, sir. I'm ready to hear your evidence. I come not to hurt the court, Your Honor. I Marshal, only... go into the court and bid Judge Stoughton and Judge Sewell to declare recess for an hour. Let them go to the tavern if they will. All witnesses and prisoners will remain in the building. Aye, sir. If I may say it, sir, I know this man all my life. It is a good man. I'm sure of it, Marshal. Now, Mr. Proctor, what deposition do you have for us? And I beg you be clear, open as the sky, and honest. <clears throat> well, I am no lawyer, so The I'm... pure in heart need no lawyers. Proceed as you will. Will you read this one first, sir? It's a sort of testament. The people signing it declare their good opinion of Rebecca and my wife and Martha Corey. Their good opinion. These are all landholding farmers and members of the church. If you'll notice, sir, they've all known the women a long time and never saw no sign they had dealings with the devil. How many names on the list? Ninety-one, Excellency. All these people should be summoned for questioning. Mr. Danforth, I gave them all my word that no harm would come to them for signing this. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Can no one? All innocent and Christian people are happy for the courts in Salem. These people are gloomy for it. And surely you will want to know from each and every one of them what discontents them with you. I think they ought to be examined, sir. It is not necessarily an attack on the court, yet I believe... These are all covenanted Christians, Then I'm sure sir. they may have nothing to fear. Mr. Cheever... Have warrants drawn out for all these. Arrest for examination. Now, Mr. Proctor, what other information do you have for us, sir? You may sit down, Mr. Nurse. I have brought trouble to these people. I... No, old man, you have not hurt these people if they are of good conscience. But you must understand this, sir. A person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There be no road between. This is a sharp time, mister, a precise time. We no longer live in a dusky afternoon when evil mixed itself with good and befuddled the world. Now, by God's grace, the shining sun is up, and them that fear not light will surely praise it. I hope you'll be one of those. She's not hearty, I see. No, sir, she's not. Mary. Remember what the angel Raphael said to the boy Tobias. Remember it. Aye. Do that which is good and no harm. We wait on you, mister. Aye. John, my deposition. Give him mine. Aye. This is Mr. Corey's deposition. Oh? What lawyer drew this, Corey? You know I never hired a lawyer in my life, Hathorne. Very well phrased. My compliments, Mr. Corey. Mr. Paris, if Mr. Putnam is in the court, would you bring him here? You have no legal training, Mr. Corey? I have the best, sir. I am 33 time in court in my life, and always plaintiff, too. Oh, then you are much put upon. I'm never put upon. I know my rights, sir, and I will have them. You know, your father once tried a case of mine. Indeed. Might be 35 years ago, I think. Indeed. He never spoke to you of it. No, 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 I don't recall it. Well, that's strange. He gave me nine pound damages. He were a fair judge, your father. You see, I had a white mare that time, and this fella come to borrow the mare. Aye, there he is. Mr. Putnam, I have here an accusation by Mr. Corey against you. It states that you coldly prompted your daughter to cry witchery upon George Jacobs, that is now in jail. It is a lie. Mr. Putnam states your charge is a lie, sir. What do you say to that? A fart on Thomas Putnam. That is what I say to that. Yes, well, what proof do you submit for this charge, sir? Well, my proof is there. 
If Jacobs hangs for a witch, he forfeit up his property. That's law. And there is none but Putnam with coin to buy so great a piece. This man is killing his neighbors for their land. But proof, sir, proof. The proof is there. I have it from an honest man who heard Putnam say it. The day his daughter cried out on Jacobs, he said she'd given him a fair gift of land. And the name of this man? What name? The man that give you this information. Why, I... I cannot give you his name. And why not? You know well why not. He'll lay in jail if I give his name. This is contempt of the court, Mr. Danforth. Surely you will tell us the name. I will not give you no name. I mentioned my wife's name once, and I'll burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. In that case, I have no other choice but to arrest you for contempt of this court. Do you know that? Uh, This is a hearing. You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing. Oh, it is a proper lawyer, is it? Do you wish me to declare this court in full session here? Or will you give me good reply? I cannot give you no name, sir. I cannot. You're a foolish old man. Mr. Cheever, begin the record. The court is now in session. Now I ask you, Mr. Your Honor, he has the story in confidence, sir. He cannot break a confidence. The devil lives on these confidences. Without these confidences, Your Excellency, there could be no conspiracy. I think it must be broken, sir. Old man, if your informant tells the truth, let him come here openly like a decent man. But if he hides in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the government and the central church demand of you the name of him who reported Mr. Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellency. Mr. Hell. We cannot blink it more, sir. There is a prodigious fear of this court in the country. Then there is a prodigious guilt in this country. Are you afraid to be questioned here, Mr. Hale? I may only fear the Lord, sir, but there is fear in the country, nevertheless. Approach me not with fear in the country. There is fear in the country because there is a moving plot to topple Christ in this country. But it does not follow that everyone accused is part of it. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None. Now, Mr. Corey, I arrest you for contempt of this court. You will sit down and take counsel with yourself, or you will be set in jail until you decide to answer all questions. I'll cut your throat, but don't dare! I'll tell you yet! Thomas, come away from the old man! Peace, Giles, peace. (laughs) We'll prove ourselves now, we will. (laughs) Say nothing more, John. He's only playing you. He means to hang us all! This is a court of law, mister. I'll have no effrontery. Forgive him his old age, Your Honor. We'll prove it all. We will. But you cannot weep, Mary. Remember what the angels say to the boy. Hold to it. There is your rock. This is Mary Warren's deposition. I ask you remember, sir, while you read it, that until two weeks ago, she were no different than the other children are today. You saw her howl. She screamed. She swore familiar spirits choked her. She even testified that Satan, in the form of women now in jail, Tried to win her soul away, and then when she refused... We know all uh, this. Aye, sir. She swears now she never saw Satan, nor any spirits, vague or clear, that Satan may have sent to hurt her. And she declares that her friends are lying now. Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to the heart of the matter. It surely does. I cannot say he is an honest man. I know him little. But in all justice, sir, a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. In God's name, sir, stop here. Send him home and let him come again with a lawyer. Now, look here, Mr. Hale. Excellency, I have signed 72 death warrants. I am a minister of the Lord, and I dare not take a life unless there be a proof so immaculate that no slightest qualm of conscience may doubt it. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. I have this morning signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse. I'll not conceal it, sir. My hand shakes yet as with a wound. I pray you, sir, this argument let lawyers present to you. Mr. Hale, forgive me. I'm 32 years at the bar, and I myself would be confounded were I called upon to defend these people. Let you consider now. I beg you all, do likewise. In an ordinary crime, how does one defend the accused? One calls up witnesses to prove his innocence. 
But witchcraft is ipso facto. On its face, by its nature, an invisible crime, is it not? Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? The witch and her victims, none other. Now, we cannot hope that the witch will accuse herself, granted. Therefore, we must rely upon her victims, and they do testify. The children do testify. As for the witches, none will deny we are most eager for all their confessions. Therefore, what is left for a lawyer to bring out? I think I have made my point, have I not? But this child claims that the girls are not truthful, and if they are not that truthful... That is then... precisely what I am about to consider, Mr. Hale. What more can you ask of me? Unless you doubt my probity. I surely do not, sir. Let you consider it, then. Then let you put your heart to rest. A deposition, Mr. Proctor. I should like to question her. Mr. Paris! I bid you be silent. Mr. Cheever, go into the court and bring the children here. Mary Warren, how came you to this turnabout? Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. Has he threatened no, you? No, sir. Then you tell me you sat in my court callously lying when you knew people would hang by your evidence? Answer me. I did, sir. How were you instructed in your life? Do you not know that God damns all liars? Or is it now that you're lying? No, sir. I'm with God now. You are with God now. I see. I tell you this, you are either lying now or you are lying in court. In either case, you have committed perjury and you will go to jail for it. You cannot lightly say you lied, Mary. Do you know that? I cannot lie no more. I'm with God. I'm with God. Uh, Ruth Putnam is not in the court, sir, nor the other children. These are sufficient. Sit you down, children. Your friend, Mary Warren has given us a deposition in which she swears she never saw any familiar spirits, apparitions, or any manifest of the devil. She also claims that none of you have seen these things either. Now, children, this is a court of law. The law based on the Bible, the Bible writ by Almighty God, forbids the practice of witchery and describes death as a penalty thereof. But likewise, children, the law and the Bible damn all bearers of false witness. Now, it does not escape me that this deposition may be devised to blind us. It may very well be that Mary Warren has been conquered by Satan and sent here to distract our sacred purpose. If so, her neck will break for it. But if she speak true, I bid you drop your guile and confess your pretense a quick confession will go easier for you. Abigail Williams, rise. Is there any truth in this? No, sir. Children, a very auger pit will now be turned into your souls until your honesty is proved. Will either one of you change your position? Or do you force me to hard questioning? I have not to change, sir. She lies. You will go on with this, Mary Warren? A puppet was discovered in Mr. Proctor's house, stabbed by a needle. Mary Warren claims that you sat beside her in court when she made it. You saw her make it and witnessed that she herself stuck the needle into it for safekeeping. What say you to that? It is a lie, sir. While you worked for Mr. Proctor, did you see any puppets in that house? Goody Proctor always kept puppets. Your Honor, my wife never kept no puppets. Mary Warren confesses it was her puppet. Your Excellency. Mr. Cheeva. When I spoke with Goody Proctor in the house, she said she never kept no puppets. But she said she did keep puppets when she were a girl. She has not been a girl these 15 years, Your Honor. But a puppet will keep 15 years, will it not? It will keep if it is kept. 
But Mary Warren declares she never saw no puppets in my house, nor anyone else. Why could there not have been puppets hid where no one ever saw them? There might also be a dragon with five legs, but no one has ever seen it. We are here, Your Excellency, precisely to discover what no one has ever seen. Mr. Danforth, what profit this girl to turn herself about? What may Mary Warren gain but hard questioning and worse? You are charging Abigail Williams with a marvelous cool plot to murder. Do you know that? I do, sir. I believe she means to murder. This child murder your wife? It is no child. Now hear me, sir. In the sight of the congregation, she were twice this year put out of this meeting house for laughter during prayer. Was that laughter during prayer? Excellency, she were under Tituba's power then. But she is solemn now. Aye, now she is solemn and goes to hang people. Quiet, man. Surely it have no bearing on the question, sir. He charges contemplation of murder. Aye. Continue, Mr. Proctor. Mary, tell the governor how you danced in the woods. Excellency, ever since I come to Salem, this man is blackening my name. In a moment, sir. What is this dancing? Mr. Proctor? Abigail leads the girls to the woods, Your Honor. They have danced there naked. Your Honor, this... Mr. Paris discovered them himself in the dead of night. There's the child she is. Mr. Paris? I can only say this. I never found any of them naked at this man. you discovered them dancing in the woods, Abigail? Excellency, when I first arrived from Beverly, Mr. Paris told me that. Do you deny this, Mr. Paris? I do not. But I never saw any of them naked. But she have danced. Aye, sir. Excellency, will you permit me? Proceed. You say you never saw no spirits, Mary. Were never threatened or afflicted by any manifest of the devil or the devil's agents? No, sir. And yet, when people accused of witchery confronted you in court, you would faint, saying their spirits came out of their bodies and choked you. Pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. Pretense, sir. But you did turn cold, did you not? I myself picked you up many times in your skin. What I see, Mr. Dan. Yes, I have seen that many times. She only pretended to faint, Excellency. They're all marvelous pretenders. Then can she pretend to faint now? Now. Why not? Now there are no spirits attacking her, for none in this courtroom is accused of witchcraft. Let her turn herself cold now. Let her pretend she is being attacked now. Let her faint. Faint! I faint and prove to us how you pretended so many times in this courtroom. I cannot faint now, sir. Can you not pretend it? I have no sense of it now. Why? What is lacking now? I cannot tell, sir. Might it be that here there are no afflicting spirits loose, but in court there were some? I never saw no spirits. Then see no spirits now and prove to us how you can make yourself faint by your own will as you claim. I cannot do it. Then you will confess, will you not, that it were attacking spirits made you faint? No, sir. Your Honor, this is a trick to blind the court. It's not a trick. I used to faint because I thought you I saw spirits. You thought you saw them. But I did not, Your Honor. How could you think you saw them unless you saw them? I cannot tell how, but I did. I, I heard the other girls screaming, and you, Your Honor, you seemed to believe them. It were only sport in the beginning, sir, but then the whole world cried, Spirit, Spirit. I promise you, Mr. Danforth, I only thought I saw them, but I did not. Surely your excellency will not be taken by this simple lie. Abigail, I bid you search your heart and tell me this. But beware of a child. To God every soul is precious and his vengeance is terrible on them who take life without cause. Is it possible the spirits you have seen are illusions only? Some deception that may well, have crossed your mind? Base question, sir. Child, I would have you I have been it. hurt, Mr. Danforth. I've seen my blood running out. I've been near to murdered every day because I've done my duty pointing out the devil's people. And this is my reward to be denied, mistrusted, Child, questioned. I do not mistrust Let you beware, you. Mr. Danforth. Think you to be so mighty that the power of hell may not turn your wits. Beware of it. There is... What is it, child? wind has come, Abby. Your Honor, I freeze. They're pretending. She is cold, Your Honor. Touch her. Mary, do you send this shadow on me? Lord, save me. I freeze. I freeze. It's the wind, the wind. Abby, don't do that. Mary Warren, do you witch her? I say to you, do you send your spirits out? Ah, let me go, Mr. Proctor. I cannot. I cannot. Oh, Heavenly Father, take away this shadow. How do you 
you call heaven? Whore! Oh! Take your hands oh! off her! Man, man, what do you do? It is a whore. You charge... Mr. Danford, he is lying. Mark her now. She'll suck a scream to stab me with... You will prove this. This will not pass. I have known her, sir. I have known her. You are a ledger. John, you must not tell... Oh, such Francis, I wish you had some evil in you that you might know me. A man will not cast away his good name. You surely know that. In what time? In what place? In the proper place where my beasts are bedded. On the last night of my joy, some eight months past, she used to serve me in my house, sir. She... A man may think God sleeps, but God sees everything. I know it now. I beg you, sir. I beg you, see her what she is. My wife, my dear good wife, took this girl soon after, sir, and put her out on the high road, and being what she is, a lump of vanity, she... Excellency, forgive me. Forgive me. She, th she thinks to dance with me on my wife's grave. And well she might, for I thought of her softly. God help me, I lusted, and there is a promise in such sweat. But it is a whore's vengeance, and you must see it, sir. I, I set myself entirely in your hands. I know you must see it now. You will deny every scrap and tittle of this. If I must answer that, I will leave, and I will not come back. I have made a bell of my honor. I have run the doom of my good name. You will believe me, Mr. Danforth. My wife is innocent, except she knew a whore when she saw one. What look do you give me? I don't have such looks. Remain where you are. Mr. Paris, go into the courtroom and bring good wife Proctor here. Your Excellency. Bring her yes, here. And tell another word of what has been spoken. And knock before you enter. Now we will touch the bottom of this swamp. Your wife, you say, is an honest woman. In her life, sir, she has never lied. There are them that cannot sing and them that cannot weep. My wife, sir, cannot lie. I've paid much to learn it. And when she put this girl out of your house, she put her out for a harlot. Aye, she did. And she knew her for a harlot. Aye, she knew her for a harlot. Good, then. And if she tell me it was for harlotry, girl... May God spread his mercy on you. Hold! Turn your back. Turn your back. You likewise. Neither of you are to face Goody Proctor. No one in this court will say one word or raise a gesture, I or nay. Come in, Mr. Cheever. Report the testimony in all its exactness. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Come here, woman. Look at me only, not at your husband. In my eyes only. Good, sir. We are given to understand that one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That is true, sir. For what cause did you dismiss her? Look at me, woman, not at your husband. The answer is in your memory. You need no help to give it to me. Why did you dismiss Abigail Williams? She dissatisfied me and my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? She was... Look at me, woman. Was she slovenly? Was she lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, I... In, in that time, I was sick, and I... My husband is a good and righteous man. He's never drunk, as some are, nor wasting his time at the shovel board, but always at his work. But in my sickness, you see, sir... I... I were a long time sick after my last baby, and I thought I saw my husband somewhat turning from me, and this girl... Look at me. Yes, sir. Abigail Williams... What of Abigail Williams? I...
came to think he fancied her. And so one night I lost my wits, I think, and I put her out on the high road. Your husband, did he indeed turn from you? My husband is a goodly man. Sir. Then he did not turn from you? He... Look at me, woman. To your own knowledge, has John Proctor ever committed the crime of lechery? Answer me. Is your husband a lecher? No, sir. Marshal, remove her. Elizabeth, she has spoken. Me. Remove her. Elizabeth, I have confessed it. Oh, God! She only thought to save my name. Oh, Excellency, it is a natural lie to tell. I beg you, stop now before another is condemned. I may shut my conscience to it no more. Private vengeance is working through this testimony. From the beginning, this man has struck me true. By my oath to heaven, I believe him now. And I pray you call back his wife. This woman before... has not spoke one word of lechery. This man has lied. I believe him. This girl has always struck me false, sir. She has... What is it, child? What is it? <laughs> child! Be gone, be What's gone, there? <laughs> child, girls, why do you... Where? Why? Why do you come, yellow bird? Where's a bird? I see no bird. My face. My face. Mr. Hale. Quiet, man. But you see a bird. Quiet. God made my face. You can't want to tear my face. Envy is a deadly sin, Mary. Abby. Oh, Mary, this is a black art to change your shape. No, I cannot. I cannot stop my mouth. It's God's work I do. Abby, I'm here. Mr. Danforth, they're pretending. Oh, Mary, please don't come down. Her claws. She's stretching her claws. Lies, lies. Mary, please don't hurt me. I'm not hurting her. Why does she see this vision? She sees nothing. She sees nothing. Abby, you mustn't. Abby, you mustn't. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Mary Warren, draw back your spirit out of them. Mr. Danforth. Have you compacted with the devil, have you? Never, 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 never. Why can they only repeat you? Give me a whip, I'll stop it. They're sporting, they're sporting. Abby, stop it. Abby, stop, stop it. it. Stop it. Stop it. A little while ago, you were afflicted. Now it seems you afflict others. Where do you find this power? I have no power. I have no power. They're calling you, Why sir. have you turned back these last two weeks? Have you seen the devil, have you? You have God damns all liars. Have you seen the devil? Have you compacted with Lucifer? Have you? God damns liars, Mary. I cannot understand you. What do you say? You will confess or you will hang. No! No! Do you know who I am? I say you will hang if you do not open with me. Mary, remember the angel do that which is good the and no harm. The wings are spreading. Oh, Mary, oh, don't. Oh, I see nothing, Your Honor. Where do you find this power? Speak. She's going to come down. She's walking the beam. Will you speak? I cannot! I cannot! Cast the devil out, child. Look him in the face. Trample him. We can Look save out! him. Now. You must stand He's fast against down. him. <laughs> Mary, tell the deputy governor what they do. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Mary! You are the devil's man! Praise God! Praise God! Mary, how? Oh, no. He bid you do the devil's work. He, he come at me by night and every day to sign. Sign. Sign, sign what? The devil's book. He come with a book. My name. He, he want my name. I'll murder you. He says it's my wife, Hag. We must go and overthrow the court, he says. Mr. Hale. He wake me every night. His eyes like coals and his fingers claw my neck and I sign. I sign. Excellency, this child's gone wild, Mary. No! Mary. I love God. I go your way no more. I love God. I bless God. Abby, I'll never hurt you more. What are you, mister? You are combined with Antichrist, are you not? I have seen your power. You cannot deny it. What say you, mister? Excellency. I will have no more from you, Mr. Hale. Will you confess yourself befouled with hell? Or will you keep this black allegiance yet? What say you, mister? I say, I say God is dead. Hear it. Hear it! A fire! A fire is burning. I hear the boot of Lucifer. I see his filthy face. And it's my face and yours, Danforth. For them that quail to bring men out of ignorance, as I have quailed, and as you quail now, when you know in all your black hearts that this be fraud, God damns our kind especially, and we will burn. We will burn together. Marshal, 
take him and Corey with them to jail. I denounce these proceedings. You are pulling heaven down and raising up a whore. I denounce these uh, proceedings. I quit this court. Mr. Hale. Mr. Hale. Good morning, Your Excellency. Where's Mr. Paris? I'll fetch him. Marshal, when did the Reverend Hale arrive? It was toward midnight, sir, I think. What's he about here? Well, he goes among them that will hang, sir, and he prays with them. He sits with Goody Nurse now, and Mr. Paris is with him, too. Indeed. If that man have no authority here, why have you let him in? Why, Mr. Paris, command me, sir. I cannot deny him. Marshal, are you drunk? Well, no, sir. It is a bitter night, and I have no fire here. Fetch Mr. Paris. Aye, sir. Marshal, there's prodigious stench in this place. I have just now cleared the place of people for you, sir. Beware of hard drink, Marshal. Aye, sir. Let your question hail, Excellency. I should not be surprised you've been preaching in Andover lately. We'll come to that. Speak nothing of Andover. Paris prays with him. That's strange. Excellency, I wonder if it'd be wise to let Mr. Paris so continuously with the prisoners. I think sometimes the man has a mad look these mad? days. I met him yesterday coming out of his house, and I bid him good morning. And he wept and went his way. I think it is not well the village sees him so unsteady. Perhaps he has some sorrow. I think it be the cows, sir. Cows? There be so many cows wandering the high roads. Now their masters are in the jail. Much disagreement who they'll belong to now. I know Mr. Paris be arguing with farmers all day yesterday. There's great contention, sir. About the cows. Contention make him weep, sir. It were always a man weep for contention. Oh, good morning, Excellency. Thank you for coming. I beg your pardon, waking you so early. Good morning, Judge Hathorne. The Reverend Hale have no right to you enter You leave here. him alone with the prisoners. What's his business here? Hear me, Excellency. It is of providence. Reverend Hale has returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bid her confess? Hear me. Rebecca have not given me a word this three months since she came. But now she sits with him and her sister and Martha Corey and two or three others. He plead with them, confess their crimes and save their lives. Why, this is indeed provident, and they softened, they softened. Not yet, not yet. So I thought to summon you, sir, that we might not think on... Well, I thought to offer up a question, sir, that Mr. I hope Paris, not... be plain. What troubles you? There is news that the court, the court must reckon with. My niece, Abigail, I believe she has vanished. Vanished? I thought to inform you of it earlier in the week, Why? sir. Why? How long has she been gone? This be the third night. She told me she would spend a night with Mercy Lewis, and next day, when she does not return, I send to Mr. Lewis to inquire. Mercy told him that she would spend a night at my house. They're both gone? They are, sir. Well, we must send a party for them. Where may they be? Excellency, I believe they be aboard a ship. My daughter told me she heard them speaking of ships last week. And tonight I discover my strong box is broken, too. She have robbed you? Thirty-one pound is gone. I am penniless. Mr. Paris, you are a brainless man. Excellency, it profit nothing you should blame me. I cannot think they would run off except they fear to keep in Salem anymore. Mark you, Sir Abigail, had close knowledge of the town. And since the news of Andover has Andover broken Andover has been remedied. The court returns there Friday and will resume examinations. I am sure of it, sir. But rumor here speak rebellion. There is no rebellion in Andover. I tell you what is spoken here, sir. Andover have thrown out the court, they say, and will have no part of witchcraft. There is a faction here that is feeding on that news. And I tell you true, sir, I fear there will be riot here. Riot? Why, at every execution I have seen naught but high satisfaction in the town. Judge Hathorne, it were another sort that hanged till now. Rebecca Nurse is no Bridget who lived three years with Bishop before they were married. John Proctor is no Ice Ward who drank his family to ruin. I would to God it were not so, sir. But these people have great weight yet in the village. Let Rebecca Nurse stand upon the gibbet and offer up some righteous prayer. I fear she will wake a vengeance on you. Excellency, she is condemned a witch. I the pray court. you, Judge Hathorn. How do you propose, then? Excellency, I'd postpone... There will be no postponement. But now that Mr. Hale's returned, there is hope, I think. If he can bring one of these to God... That confession surely damns the others in the public eye, and none may doubt more that they are all linked to hell. But this way, still unconfessed and claiming innocence, doubts will multiply. Many honest people will weep for them, and our good purpose is lost in their tears. Mr. Cheeva, give me the list. Excellency, it must not be forgotten. 
When I sent for the congregation for John Proctor's excommunication, hardly more than 30 people came to hear it. That speaker discontent. There will I be no to... postponement. Excellency. Now, mister, which of these, in your opinion, may be brought to God? I myself will strive with him till dawn. There is not sufficient time I shall dawn. do my utmost. Which of them do you have hope for? Your Excellency, a dagger. What are you saying? Today, when I opened up my door to leave my house, a dagger clattered to the ground. We dare not hang this sort. There is danger in it for me. I dare not go outside at night. Whatever in hell except my congratulations, we are gladdened to find that you have returned to your good work. You must pardon them. They will not budge. You must understand me, sir. I cannot pardon these when twelve already are hanged for the same crime. It is not just. Rebecca will not confess. The sun will rise in a few moments. Excellency, I must have more time. Now hear me and beguile yourself no more. I will not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Them that will not confess will hang. Twelve already are executed. The names of these seven are given out and the town expects to see them die this morning. Postponement now speaks of floundering on my part. While I speak God's law, I will not crack its voice with whimpering. <laughs> and if retaliation is what you fear, you know this. I will hang 10,000 that dare to rise against the law. And an ocean of salt tears will not melt the resolution of these statutes. Now draw yourself up like men and help me, as you are bound by heaven to do. Mr. Hale. Have you spoken to them all? All but Proctor. He's in the dungeon now. What's Proctor's way now? He sits like some great bird, sir. You'd not know he lived, except he will take food from time to time. His wife? His wife is well on with child now? She is, sir. What say you, Mr. Paris? You have closer knowledge of this man. Might her presence soften him? It's possible, sir. He have not laid eyes on her these past three months. I should summon her. Is he yet adamant? Has he struck you again? He cannot now, sir. He is chained to the wall. Fetch Goody Proctor here. Then let you bring him in. Aye, sir. Excellency, if you postpone a week and publish to the town that you are striving for their confessions, that speak mercy on your part, not faltering. Mr. Hale, as God have not empowered me like Joshua to stop the sun from rising, so I cannot withhold from them the perfection of their punishment. If you think God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danforth, you, you are mistaken. you heard a rebellion spoke in this town? Excellency, there are orphans wandering from house to house. Abandoned cattle bellow on the high roads. The stink of rotting crops hangs everywhere, and no man knows when the harlot's cry will end his life. And you wonder yet a rebellion spoke. Better you should marvel how they do not burn your province. Mr. Hale, have you breached in Andover this morning? Thank God they have no need of me in Andover. You baffle me. Why have you returned here? Why is all simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians. They should belie themselves. There is blood on my head. Cannot you see the blood on my head? Hush. Now, Goody Proctor, I hope you are hearty. I am yet six months before my time. I pray you be at your ease. We come not for your life. We... Mr. Hale, will you speak with this woman? Goody Proctor, your husband is marked to hang this morning. I prove it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with the court. I come of my own, Goody Proctor. I would save your husband's life. For if he is taken, I count myself his murderer. Do you understand me? What do you want of me? Goody Proctor, I have gone these three months like our Lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way, for damnation's doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. It is no lie. You cannot speak of lies. It is a lie. They are innocent. I will hear no more of that. Let you not mistake your duty as I mistook my own. I came into this village like a bridegroom to his beloved, carrying gifts of high religion. The very crowns of holy law I brought. And what I touched with my bright confidence, it died. And where I turned the eye of my great faith, blood flowed up. Beware, Goody Proctor, cleave to no faith when faith brings blood. 
It is mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice life, woman. Life is God's most precious gift, and no principle, however glorious, can justify the taking of it. I beg you, prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie, and quail not before God's judgment in this. For it may well be that God damns a liar less than he that throws his life away for pride. Will you plead with him? I cannot think he will listen to another. I think that be the devil's argument. Woman, before the laws of God, we are as swine. We cannot read his I will. I cannot dispute with you, sir. I lack learning for it. Goody Proctor, you are not summoned here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness in you? He will die with the sunrise, your husband. Do you understand that? What say you? Will you contend with him? Are you stone? I tell you true, woman. If I had no other proof of your unnatural life, your dry eyes now would be sufficient evidence that you have given up your soul to hell. A very ape would weep at such calamity. Have the devil dried up any tear of pity in you? Take her out. It profits nothing she should speak to him. Let me speak with him, Excellency. You will strive with him? Will you plead for his confession, or will you not? I promise nothing. Let me speak with him. Pray, leave him, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, you have been notified, have you not? There is light in the sky, mister. Take counsel with your wife, and may God help you to turn your back on hell. Excellency, let you, Mr. Proctor, should you desire a cup of cider, I could. God lead you now. Child. It grows. <laughs> there, there is no word of the boys. They're well. Rebecca Samuel keeps them. You have not seen them? I have not. Uh, you are a marvel, Elizabeth. You've been tortured. come for my life now. I know it. None have confessed. Oh, there have been many confessed. Who are they? Oh, there be uh, a hundred or more, they say. Uh, Goody Ballard is one. Isaiah Goodkind is one. There be many. Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She's one foot in heaven now. Naught may hurt her more. And Giles? You've not heard it. I hear nothing where I'm kept. Giles is dead. Well, when were he hanged? He were not hanged. He would not answer I or nay to his indictment. For if he denied the charge, they'd hang him surely and auction out his property. So he stand mute and died Christian under the law. And so his sons will have his farm. It is the law, for he could not be condemned a wizard without he answer the indictment, I or nay. And then how does he die? They press him, John. Press? Great stones they lay upon his chest until he plead, I or nay. They say, he give them but two words. More weight, he says, and died. More weight? Aye. It were a fearsome man, Giles Corey. I have been thinking I would confess to them, Elizabeth. 
What say you if I give them that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will, I would have it. I want you living, John, that's sure. Child's wife, she have confessed. She will not. It is pretense, Elizabeth. Of course it is. I cannot mount the gibbet like a saint. I'm not that man. I'm no good man. My honesty is broke, Elizabeth. Nothing spoiled by giving them this lie that we're not rotten long before. And yet you've not confessed till now without speak goodness in you. The spite only keeps me silent. It's hard to give a lie to dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. It's not for me to give, John. I am... I would have you see some honesty in it. Let them that never lied die now to keep their souls for me. It is a pretense. It is a vanity that will not blind God or keep my children out of the wind. Of what say you? John, it come to naught that I should forgive you if you'll not forgive yourself. It's not my soul, John. It is yours. Only be sure of this, for I know it now. Whatever you do, it is a good man, does it? I've read my heart this three months, John. I have sins of my own to count. It needs a cold wife to prompt lechery. Enough, enough. Better you should know me. I'll not hear it. I know you. Take my sins upon you, John. No, I take my own, my own. John, I counted myself so plain, so poorly made. No honest love could come to me. Suspicion kissed you when I did. I never knew how I should say my love. It were a cold house I kept. What say you, Proctor? The sun is soon up. Do what you will. Let none be your judge. There be no higher judge under heaven than Proctor is. Forgive me. Forgive me, John. I never knew such goodness in the world. I want my life. You'll confess yourself. I will have my life. God be praised. It is a providence. He will confess. Proctor will confess. Why do you cry it? It is evil, is it not? It is evil. I cannot judge you, John. I cannot. Then who will judge me? God in heaven. What is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? It is honest, I think so. I am no saint. Let Rebecca go like a saint. For me, it is false. I am not your judge. I cannot be. Do as you will. Do as you will. Would you give them such a lie? Say it. Would you give them this? No, you would not. The tongs of fire were singeing you. You would not. It is evil. Good, then. It is evil, and I do it. Praise to God. Praise to God. You shall be blessed in heaven for this. And now, then, let us have it. Are you ready, Mr. Cheva? Why must it be written? Why, for the good instruction of the village, mister. This we shall post on the church door. Where's the marshal? The marshal. Marshal! Marshal! Hurry! Now, then, mister, will you speak slowly and directly to the point, for Mr. Cheever's sake? Mr. Proctor, have you ever seen the devil in your life? Come, mister. There is light in the sky. The town waits at the scaffold. I would give out this news. Have you ever seen the devil? I did. Praise God. And when he came to you, what were his demand? Did he bid you do his work upon this earth? He did. And you bound yourself to his service? Come in, woman, come in. John, you are... Courage, man, courage. Let her witness your good example that she herself may come to God. Now hear it, goody nurse. Say on, Mr. Proctor. Did you bind yourself to the devil's service? Oh, John. I did. 
Now, woman, surely you see it profits nothing to keep this conspiracy any further. Will you confess yourself with him? Oh, may God send his mercy on you. Goody nurse, will you confess yourself? Well, that is a lie, a lie. How may I damn myself? I cannot, I cannot! Mr. Proctor, when the devil came to you, did you see Rebecca Nurse in his company? Hmm. Courage, man. Did you ever see this woman with a devil? No. Did you ever see her sister, Mary Easty, with a devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see Martha Corey with a devil? I did not. Did you see anyone with a devil? I did not. You mistake me, Mr. Proctor. I am not empowered to trade your life for a lie. You most certainly saw someone with a devil. At least a score of people have testified they have seen this woman with a devil. Then it is proved. Why must I say it? Why must you say it? You should rejoice to say it if your soul is truly purged of any love of hell. They think to go like saints. I like not to spoil Mr. their names. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? <laughs> woman never thought she'd done the devil's work. Now, look, mister, I think you mistake your duty here. It matters nothing what she thought. She is convicted for the unnatural murder of children. You for sending your spirits out upon Mary Warren. Your soul alone is the issue here, mister, and you will prove its whiteness or you cannot live in a Christian country. Now, sir, what others conspired with you in the devil's company. To your knowledge, has Rebecca Nurse ever... I speak my own sins. I cannot judge another. I have no tongue for it. Excellency, it is enough. He confessed himself. Let him sign it. Let him sign it. It is a great service, sir. It will strike the village that Proctor confess. I beg of you, sir, let him sign. The sun is up, Excellency. Very well. Sign your testimony. Give it to him. Well, sign it, man. You have all witnessed it. It is enough. You will not sign it? You have all witnessed it. What more is needed? Do you sport with me, sir? You will sign your name to it, or it is no confession. Uh, your last name, mister. Praise be to the Lord. Now, Mr. Proctor, if you please. No. Mr. Proctor, I'm No, no, I, I've signed it. If you have seen me, it's done. You have no need for this. Proctor, the village must have. I have the village. I confess to God. God sees my name on this. It is enough. No, no, it is not you enough. You came I... here to save my soul, did you not? Here, I have confessed oh, myself. You have it is not enough. not confessed. I have confessed myself. Is there no good penitence but it be public? God does not need my name nailed to the church. God sees my name. God knows how black my sins are. It is enough. Mr. Proctor. You'll not use me. I'm no Sarah Good at Tichuba. I'm John Proctor. You'll not use me. It is no part of salvation that you use me. Mr. Proctor, I, I do not wish... I have three children. How may I teach them to walk like men in the world? And I sold my friends. You have not sold your friends. And beguile friend. me not. I blacken them all when this is nailed to the church the very day they hang for silence. Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal proof you that you... You are the high court. Your word is good enough. And tell them I confess. Say, Proctor broke his knees and wept like a woman. Say what you will, but my name... You it's the same, isn't it? If I report it or you sign it? No, no, it is not the same. What others say and what I sign to is not the same. Why do you mean to deny this? I condition? mean to deny nothing. Well, then I... You must explain to me, it's Mr. Because Proctor. Because it is my name. Because I cannot have another in my life. Because I lie and sign myself to lies. Because I'm not worth the dust on the feet of them that hang. How may I live without my name? I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. Is that document a lie? If it is, I will not accept it. What say you, mister? I will not deal in lies. You will give me your honest confession in my hand. Or I cannot save you from the rope. Which way do you go, mister? Marshal! Proctor. Proctor. Man, you will hang. You cannot. I can. And there's your first marvel. That I can. You've made your magic now. 
And now I do think I see some shred of goodness in John Proctor. Not enough to weave a banner with, but quite enough to keep it from such dogs. <laughs> tears. Give him no tears. Tears pleasure them. Show honor now. Show a, a stony heart and sink them with it. Let you fear nothing. Another judgment waits us all. Hang them high over the town. Who weeps for these, weeps for corruption. Come, man. Uh, I've had no breakfast. Could he, Proctor? Go to him. There is yet time. Go to him. Proctor! Proctor! Woman, plead with him. Woman, it is pride, it is vanity. Be his helper. What profit him to bleed? Shall the dust praise him? Shall the worms declare his truth? Go to him, take his shame away. He have his goodness now. God forbid I take it from him. <laughs> 